Greeting for all you people out there in DVD watching land. Warner Brothers has asked me, the star of Looney Tunes back in action, to take you on a little behind the scenes peek at the movie. That's me there at the center of all the other Looney Tunes. Eh, I'm on day two, you know. Really? I don't see you. Just pull back a little. You wanna stand here and admire yourself, or can we get on with it? I'm good. Let's just get on with the show, shall we? The back lot is where all the magic happens. Well, Mr. Know-it-all, what's the first thing you need to make a movie? Um, a script? Actors? A great director like Joe Dante? Action! Oh, pain. Oh, agony. Fuck up. Tell us, Joe. Tell the folks at home how wonderful I am to work with. Well, it was, uh, sometimes it was difficult. I mean, look, there's only one director on the picture, and it shouldn't be a duck. I know, I know you want to be a filmmaker, but, you know, I think you really have to sort of have a coherent thought process first. I'll take that as a compliment. Well, at least Steve Martin seemed to have a good time working with him. Steve was very good with Daffy, though, and I think it's because Steve has worked with other unbalanced people in his career. Unbalanced? Despicable. Who needs directors anyway when you've got lavish sets? For this scene, we went all the way to Africa, where our location scouts discovered a remote jungle with naturally occurring giant monkey heads. Those are really hard to find in the wild like that. Uh, Daffy, we didn't go to Africa. Speak for yourself, Rabbit. Maybe they only had the money for the big stars to go to Africa, so they just sent me. Hey, I think I see our set designer, Bill Brzezinski. He'll give us the inside scoop. Tell our viewers and the rabbit where we are right now, Bill. You're backstage right now at Monkey Island, and as you can see, it's all white because this is the styrofoam walls. The entire set is carved out of foam rubber. When we go on the other side, it's transformed into the Monkey Island jungle set. Africa, huh, Mr. Know-it-all? Come to think of it, my car ride was awful short. Here's the monkey face that shoots Daffy full of darts. And here's the giant rock that crushes him. And that was no stunt duck. Eh, let's move on, shall we? I'll bet our viewers would love to take an all-access tour of the lot. Follow me, everybody! Excuse me. Uh, which way to the Area 52 set? Everybody's a comedian. Ah, here we are. Hiya, Bill. You again. What you got for us here? This is where we do our alien autopsies, but we don't really do much of an autopsy. We're mostly into, like, tickling the aliens and see what makes them laugh. Stop. My sides are splitting. So now that we've had a chance to look at a couple of the sets from our movie, let's take a look at the fascinating world of movie props. Props are anything that the actors handle in a movie, besides the other actors. <laughs> you notice on the tables here, all these strange gadgets, technology that we've taken from all the aliens in the universe? This is our alien testing room where we test the weapons they get, we get for them. We're not really into harming them, we just want to, like, uh, you know, learn how they... Uh, Make things. Bill, that was both informative and just a little kooky. Thank you very much. Speaking of props, I got one. Remember this scene? Right, boys? Humph. Obviously a foam rubber fake. This time you're right. The real one's still on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, where's yours again? Oh, brother. Look, Dev, it's transportation coordinator Randy White. He was in charge of getting all the vehicles for the movie. So, um, Randy, tell us about the spy car. It's an English model called a TVR, right? Oh, yeah. It's a great car. The car goes 200 miles per hour. It's got a uh, straight six four liter engine, puts out about 390 horsepower. It sells for about $100,000. They spent a hundred grand on a lousy car? I can't get them to give me my own chair! Actually, Daff, they bought more than one. Ain't that right, Randy? We have a total of five cars. We have some rigged that when they go into the spy mode, that the rockets come out and exotic things happen. It has wings, it flies. Let's see here. Five cars times a hundred grand apiece. That's ridiculous! 
kill us! Hey, Daffy, you said you wanted a spy car. Maybe you can get a gremlin. How about it, Randy? Oh, the gremlins. We love our gremlins. We have six 1974 gremlins. It was fun finding them and uh, trying to make them all run again. Each one has a different function. We have one that just falls apart. When you touch it, everything falls off. Now that's an interesting feature. Well, now, who's that handsome devil? Do you hear a duck? Just introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Eric Goldberg. I'm the animation director of the film, and uh, it's my job to make you guys look good. To create the animation, we uh, actually had a crew of about 50 animators, and we had a huge number of people doing cleanup drawings, doing ink and paint, doing compositing, doing lighting, art directing, layouts. I mean, it was a crew that was as large as any live action crew. Now tell the people at home what it's really like to work with Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck could probably be on a psychologist's couch for about, you know, 20 years and still not get all of his issues out. Oh yeah, buddy? Well, if you talk to one of my shrinks, they'd tell you just how wrong you are. Daffy, keep the bill closed, okay? People are concentrating. To heck with these crew members. The real power behind this movie is its stars. Like my old pal Brendan Fraser. At least he liked to work with me. Actually, Daff, that's not what he told me when I talked to him earlier. He was never on time. And when he did show up, he was demanding. He, to tell you the truth, he was really kind of hard to work with. Yeah, but the movie turned out great. So you must have found a way to work with Daffy, right? Once you get your hand around his skinny little neck, then you can pretty much get him to do what you need to do. As long as you keep him at arm's length like that. But you just can't get him to shut up, because when you squeeze his bill, then he's <laughs> on the side of his mouth. Who needs an overgrown star like him anyway? Jenna and I don't, that's for sure. Eh, uh, Jenna and you? That's right, Rabbit. Even if the clods and imbeciles who made this movie can't appreciate my true genius, at least my sweet, sweet Jenna can. Oh, jeez, Daffy. Don't tell me you got another crush on an actress again. Actually, she's got a crush on me, Rabbit. If you just open your eyes to how the girl talks to me, you'd see it. Let's go find her and I'll prove it to you. Oh, brother, this I gotta see. There she is! Jenna, my sweet! Jenna, my lovely! Jenna, my... Get out of here! But, but... Get out of here! But Jenna, I... Go! I, I, sounds like love to me. Sorry, I tried to kick him off. Jen? She's kidding! That Jennifer Riot. This is getting embarrassing. Eh, let's just go, Daffy. How do you think Bugs feels about this? Bugs will back me up all the way. Ain't that right, Rabbit? Eh, speaking of backup, here comes some now. Yeah, I got him. Come on. Unhand me, Come sir. On, you let me go this instant. Don't you know who I am? I'm an international movie star. Don't you know what you... I gotta say, Daffy, you're always good for an entrance, but you really gotta work on your exits. Woohoo! You can't get rid of me that easy! Excuse me! Mega Star coming through! Out of the way! Oh, if you look to your left, oh, you'll see Daffy Duck be being forcibly that. removed from the line. Is Jenna coming too? I'm sure she'll be along any minute now. I'll be back! I feel like this just about wraps things up. Ready and action! Welcome to a little piece I like to call Bang, Crash, Boom. The trickiest part of an action movie like this is the special effects. That's the stuff the movie people do to make things that didn't really happen look like they really did. Brilliant. I can see this is going to be informative. The trickiest part of making a movie like this is where you and I come in. The animation process. When they shoot a scene with cartoon characters in it, they really can't afford to have us there until everything else is right. Remember this scene? Oh, that's a good one. Yes, it's always high comedy when the duck loses an eyeball or two. Nevertheless, some stars of my magnitude, and the rabbits, are expensive. The studios film the scenes with the human actors first, because they're cheaper. But the actors have to pretend we're there. Like this. Those aren't my real eyeballs. And one of the things that makes it easier for Jenna and all the actors to pretend is our very talented puppeteer, Bruce Lenoyle. Having these guys on set, having these these rudimentary but, but effective 
Thank you, puppets. I think he just called you rude, Bugs. There's a different, different look in the eye, you know? There's something there. There's something to play off of. And it shows in the performance. Once we, we do a, a pass with these guys, they know exactly where the puppets are in space. Brendan and Jen are, are brilliant at that. The next step is to shoot a scene with the puppets so the actors know where we'll be when the animators draw us in later. Then the puppets get out of the way and the actors do it without us, but with our voices. Why, Mr. Bunny? That's some grip lady. Hey, that guy sounds just like me. Almost. It's uncanny. You pickable. Next. Okay, let's explain how they do something like the water tower scene. You mean this? Simple. They find an aging water tower at a movie studio somewhere, paint the Warner Brothers logo on it, and drive a Batmobile or two into it until it falls over, isn't it obvious? Actually, Daffy, stuff like the water tower sequence is done by our visual effects crew. Oh, there's visual effects supervisor Chris Watts. Um, what's up, Watts? We have a fifth scale miniature here of the water tower. It's about uh, 25 feet tall, and it'll be filled up with water, and when the moment comes, we'll pull a few cables and the thing will come tumbling down. Wow! You guys better get this right the first time, because you sure can't do it twice. So, Chris, how'd you get this whole process started? We started out by making some pre-visualization uh, that is basically like a, almost like a cartoon of what's going to happen during this scene. We mess around with that for a while until we get it in a place where everybody likes it. And then, uh, and then once we have it where we like it, we uh, go ahead and shoot the real thing. Let's cut to the action! Action! <laughs> One last suggestion, Chris. Since you got an extra water tower and all, wouldn't it be funnier next time if it fell on the duck? I don't actually hate that at all. You know, all the visual <laughs> effects in this movie aren't as complicated as that water tower deal, but they all have to be figured out before they get filmed. How would you guess they did that bit where Brendan and Jenna jumped off the Eiffel Tower? I happen to know that was done with the puppets. Merci. Ha! Merci. Ha! Actually, that was stunt people. Remember the gag when you went butt foist into the fire extinguisher and it exploded? Certainly, that was all done by computer. Wrong again, Daffy. That was done the old fashioned way, with a little know how and a giant garbage bag full of foam. On sale, two for the price of one at Foam Depot. And you remember when you got shot through the door at the casino? You know how they made that hole in the door? I happen to know they drew that in afterwards. Euro for three. The special effects people have to build and practice everything you see in the movie that's not exactly what it appears to be. From water pouring down to water splashing up. Whenever something's supposed to break in the movie, the special effects guys have to break it first. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> All right, Daffy. Let's look at a different kind of animation that was also used in the picture. <laughs> First, they practiced, and then they did the whole thing in front of a blue screen where the characters would be drawn in later. Hmm, <laughs> kind of seems like cheating when you do it that way. I mean, where's the puppets? At the same time, we're filming the scenes for the live-action part of the movie. The animators are hard at work, drawing and designing their piece of the puzzle. Ooh, I love puzzles. <gasps> Is there a prize? Um, it's not that kind of puzzle, Dev. For example, here's how a scene looks when they shoot it. Right! I mean left! What is this? Mime school? Where's me? Then they had a rough black and white pose drawing to block in the attitudes and positions. I thought I looked a little underdone there. Then they do all the animation drawings, clean it up, color it, light it, and high presto, we're in the flesh. And all it took was six years and a million artists for three seconds of film. Not quite, but uh, you get the idea. Not only do the live actors in a scene have to react to the cartoons, but the props and set dressings are affected as well. Even something as simple as holding a menu and moving a drink umbrella has to be rehoist. 
Here's what the rough animation looks like over the scene. But when they shot it, Matthew Lillard had to pretend he was talking to Shaggy and Scooby. If you like goof on me in the sequel, I'm coming after you. Yeah, you know, give you a Scooby smile. <laughs> Right, so Just like Jenna had to pretend she was talking to me. I'm trying to be nice, but I was brought in to leverage your synergy and I, I know how she feels. I have to pretend to pay attention to you every day. Well, viewers, that wraps up our little special effects tour. I hope the information I've given you, most of which was wrong, felt the snob. I hope it has been informative and entertaining. Infotaining, if you will. <laughs> uh, but before you go, there's one more special effect I'd like to show you. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Death. Pickable.